So uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I've made the leap from room one to room two, and I've similarly made the leap up from the pelvis to the abdomen. So we have a very interesting uh, embolization case uh, that we're going to share with you. Uh, I'm very happy to be joined in the room uh, on my immediate left by uh, our unbelievable fellow, Adam Zabalewski. To Adam's left, my friend and colleague, Scott Nowakowski. Great case today we've got, and I, I think we've got a case vignette that Adam's going to share with everybody here. So this is a 76-year-old male with history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, interstitial lung disease, and um, a history of open repair and endovascular repair of a cerebral artery aneurysm in 2000 and 2001. Uh, the patient presents with an incidentally discovered 3-centimeter hepatic artery aneurysm found on CT for screening for interstitial lung disease. His past medical history and surgical <coughs> history include, um, uh, in addition to hypertension, hyperlipidemia, osteoarthritis, um, and the aforementioned um, uh, interstitial lung disease and cerebral artery aneurysm repair. Next slide. He has no known allergies. Uh, he's on Lipitor, Metoprolol, uh, Losartan, Amlodipine, aspirin, 81 milligrams. Next slide. Uh, his uh, physical exam is within normal limits. Um, his labs are shown on the right of the screen. Next slide. Uh, this is a CTA from 514, um, two axial slices through the abdomen showing a partially thrombosed three centimeter uh, uh, hepatic artery aneurysm uh, off of the common hepatic artery. Next slide. And these are the 3D reformats uh, of that CTA. Next slide. So in summary, this is a 76-year-old male with incidentally discovered partially thrombosed 3-centimeter common hepatic artery aneurysm. Um, and the plan for him today is uh, celiac artery angiogram and endovascular repair with stent-assisted coiling of said aneurysm. So the first angiogram you're seeing is an SMA angiogram, which was pretty unremarkable. And it's just showing <clears throat> this is normal SMA anatomy. There's no replaced right hepatic artery. Uh, next angiogram, please. This is a selective injection of the left gastric artery. We were pretty close to the celiac, but not exactly there yet. Next angiogram, please. So here's a hepatic artery angiogram. And there's normal anatomy, but it's of note that when you look at the common hepatic artery, there's a double density, almost as if there's a, a, a penetrating ulcer there. And it's really because this aneurysm is, is truly in the anterior posterior plane uh, and so it's not going to look like it's projecting when, 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 uh, as we're straight AP here. So this was our diagnostic study. What we, what we did here was we, we obviously put in a, a six-slender sheath, and we traded out for the uh, – took out the Sierra over an exchange-length wire, which we positioned in the splenic artery. Next angiogram, please. For a six-French uh, uh, JR4 guide cath, and this was our angiogram with a, a buddy wire in the right hepatic artery. This was a selective wire, and it's a, a fathom wire that we'd normally do for any kind of uh, celiac artery uh, intervention, typically a local regional therapy case. In the gastroduodenal artery, we have a coronary support wire. It's specifically a stabilizer wire, which is uh, manufactured by uh, by Cordis, which I, I personally like as a support wire for introducing visceral artery stents. I, again, on this angiogram, you see the double density in the common hepatic artery. Uh, and again, this is straight AP, essentially. Next angiogram, please. So what we've done here is we've we've created a very steep craniocaudal view here. We've We've removed the buddy wire, and now we have our support wire in the right hepatic artery. Our guide is in the ostium of the uh, common hepatic artery. And I think you get a sense here of this penetrating ulcer. What I, I don't think was clearly seen on the CT scan is that the thrombose portion is actually three centimeters in diameter. This area you're seeing here in maximum diameter is about 14 millimeters in diameter. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here for a second because we obviously we have a six French guy down. We could do a lot of different things. And I'm just curious whether anybody who's listening in 
has any either questions or any interesting plans on how they would want to manage this. The, the, the common hepatic measure is about six and a half. The proper measure is a little bit under five. So to lay an endograft, yeah. I, I, I was thinking we would have to take the GDA, which I, di I didn't really think was a good answer because if the endograft fails, you're going to leave him with arterial compromise to the liver, which could probably be tolerated, but it's not ideal. And so I was trying to think of an option here to preserve the flow through the GDA in case there was a failure that you would be able to provide collateral circulation through the uh, pancreatic or duodenal arcades to the liver. Yeah, I think your options are some sort of stent assisted coiling here. Um, you know, it's, I mean, with your radial axis a little limited, but you could probably stent and then get through the interstices and, and, and coil. So that's exactly what we're doing. And I, I don't, I, I am embarrassed that I don't recognize the voice of who just gave me that idea to do stent assisted yeah. coiling. It's Sabine. Sabine. Oh, hey here. man, how are you? Good, uh, good, how are so, you? So I, I'd like to think that, you know, good minds think alike or brilliant minds think alike. So the reason I have a support wire here, obviously, is that we want to be able to deliver a stent very readily. And I'm actually delivering now a 6x18 uh, balloon expandable stent uh, that goes over this coronary wire. And we're going to deliver it really right across the neck here. And we're going to do an angiogram here. And... Everybody can let me know what they think about whether or not this should be one stent, two stent, three stents. I'm going to really get close and intimate here. I think you could sneak it forward a little bit. You probably want to nail the GDA, right? Like right up against the edge of the GDA. Well, I'm actually thinking about the proximal edge, uh, and I want to land on. I want to land just where it gets a little bit narrow there, <clears> because I think that's more consistent where the neck is. I don't want to go too far in. Pretty good. Too far back. Yeah, just a hair in, I think, dude. All right, so we're getting a vote to go in another millimeter. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. All right. I tend to like that, but I'm curious as what everybody else thinks. I like that. Yeah, let's go. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's I'm go. We're going to take this up to about six and a half because we actually do like MR surveillance of all of our bisulary aneurysms, especially when we're putting in platinum coils. So, uh, again, another very good teaching point to, you know, uh, make sure that you're not using stainless steel products here, planning on doing MR surveillance because you're not going to be able to see it. So very important technical part of the case now is that I don't want to give up this support wire because it stabilizes the guide. And so as we're introducing the microcatheter, we want to keep the support wire in. I'm just, I'm just going to puff this out just to show whether we landed it or, 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 or missed it. That's pretty good. I think that's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. It is a... Uh, coronary product so it's not a peripheral product so you're not going to be able to easily get it from your peripheral rep i i i hope that's the question that you were asking yes, me but yes, we did exactly. have these that the, they're not they're not like the mount sinai catheters or something like that so this is actually in a catalog it just okay. is not the the peripheral catalog yeah. okay is there any role for, of using the uh, the 119 terumo slender sheet now now that we have it in this type of cases? Have you used it? Um, I have used it. I, um, I, I, I can't tell you that I think that one's better than the other. I think they're both fine. I, I've, I've gotten very comfortable over the years to using guiding catheters. Um, okay. And so that's just sort of where my default is. And it's, again, mostly predicated on doing renal stents uh, and visceral stents using that setup. Um, but I think if you can set it up so that you can engage with the, uh, with the sheath um, into the you know, common or proper hepatic artery, I think that's great. From, from my point of view, the, it's never as easy as it looks. It takes a little bit of time to get in there. Uh, and I, 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 my, my gut is to get this selective with a guiding system with a sheath might be probably a little bit more work than I wanted. 
So uh, uh, did he did he catheterize the celiac with this guide, or did he use a different catheter? No. What I what I did was I I took a um, a Sarah radial, okay, and okay. I catheterized the uh, celiac. I placed an exchange length wire into the splenic artery, and I did the exchange from the splenic artery with my exchange length wire for this guide. The guide ended up in the celiac, and then I used the exchange length wire as a buddy wire to get yeah. into the uh, common hepatic. I did not want the exchange length support wire across the aneurysm, as an example. I thought right. that wasn't really good you know, form. Um, and, and so that's how the case uh, ended up. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's, I think, in reality, I, I think I'm in one of the smaller cells here. Oh, there I go. Okay. Yeah. What so, uh, microcatheter is that? You, got, you guys saw that, right? Yeah. So we, we just crossed a, outside the stent. And now I'm going to have Adam back up the, the micro wire and see if we can get it to loop around. The, I'm, I'm getting blood return from the microcatheter, which is obviously a very important concept if I had dug into the clot. I wouldn't want to inject contrast here. That I think would be a big mistake. Uh, and so I'm literally just going to puff out the microcatheter just to see what it looks like. And again, you, you guys see the aneurysm there, right? Yeah. I think yes. Yeah. All right. So now we have the, the protection of the stent, and we're going to start putting in coils. Our, our default strategy for, I'd say, you know, 85 to 90% of radial cases is to track up a 038 catheter over an 035 wire and, and and see whether that gets us there. And like I said, well over 90% of the time, it, it, it gets us there. I think the problems that we have are when the radial is, is either occluded and we're choosing to go that route or when there's a loop. And, and then you're going to need something else. Yeah. Clearly, a, a, a you know, workhorse 035 wire is not going to go. Um, and so you have to figure out a way to uh, navigate it. So I'm, I'm choosing something a little bit modest. So I chose a 10 millimeter coil. Okay. And it's all about this, this bend here, about whether I'm gonna be able to have enough pushability, but I actually think I'm pretty good there. There you can see the radio opaque marker right there. Okay. So it's filling up actually rather nicely. Yeah. And I think we're out already. Okay. So we're gonna go to the next coil. Yeah, and that pack is looking pretty good. Thank you very much. Very nice of you to say. <laughs> so did you just keep doing 10s, or did you downsize one? No, I'm just doing 10s, and I, it's actually working better than I thought. Yeah. And I'm actually debating whether I'm going to put in another one, to be honest with you. Yeah. So that was three coils. All right, they were all 10s. And, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a run, and, and I'm going to see whether you – if you guys think there's contrast coming through, maybe we'll put in something smaller. But I sort of like where we are right now. We obviously still have the microcatheter in, so we can do that. Sorry, there's a lot of respiratory motion, obviously. Looks pretty close. Would you ever consider can we that un can we see that unsubtracted, please? Sorry, Rahul, you were going to ask me something? I mean, the other thing is you have a six French guide. You, the other thing is if you can't really tell is you could run the IVIS right through and then Put color because you have the six French IVIS. Yeah. Through. So I, mean, I, 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 I think I think there is a little it. I think there is a little bit of contrast going through. Now remember the guy has, has got therapeutic heparin on board. So I think I'm going to put in one more much smaller coil, probably a five millimeter coil, yeah. if we have that. And then I I think I'm going to leave this to anticoagulation. We have a six ten here. So this coil is not going as easy as I'd like, and. I think I'm being asked to hand over the camera to room one. So yeah. I think I'm going to let you guys go, but either, either this coil goes in or we're done because we're not going to be able to put in another coil. So uh, I, I want to thank all you guys for helping me out on this interesting case. I hope it was educational and I'll likely see you guys later.